Alright everybody, thank you for joining me here this afternoon. We are live right now looking at a storm near Forsan, Texas that is currently producing hail up to Easter egg sized and 70 mile per hour wind gusts. If you are included in this severe thunderstorm warning near Forsan, make sure that you are seeking shelter on the lowest floor of a building because flying debris and wind driven hail will be dangerous to deadly for many people inside of this warning box. Again, this does include Forsan, Texas, goes all the way up through Ross City, Texas, Otis Chalk, Texas, all the way through Hyman, Texas here, towards Spade, Texas, Colorado City, Texas, and even up to Lorraine, Texas, eventually down the line. So again, I do want to emphasize, once this storm does hit you, you need to be taking cover because these are some very strong winds and very large hail right now, currently crossing Interstate 87 near Fort San Texas, or sorry, Highway 87 near Fort San Texas. Um, and we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning as well. That is going to be for Mitchell and Sturry counties out here in Texas. That's for another storm here. This one's going to be heading for Hermley. This is capable of producing hail up to half dollar sized and wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So you got to look out for that one as well, guys. That's also a pretty significant storm. Not quite as big as our one here, though. That is closer to the uh, four sand area. So again, four sand, like this is coming in. All right, you need to be watching out for this. This is mainly going to impact uh, to the south of Forsan, kind of towards the Ross City area, if I had to guess, towards Otis Chalk, um, and then eventually out there towards Hyman. Once again, I think this storm is mainly going to stay on the south side of this warning, but honestly, I, I would not risk it. If if I was anywhere uh, in this warning here, I would be taking shelter. Uh, I do think, once again, though, the south side of the line that I just drew there is going to see more significant severe weather. I think that's where the main part of the hail and the damaging winds are going to stay. But areas like Forsan, you're still about to get hit by some large hail and damaging winds if you're not already. These winds are strong enough to down trees, power lines, do significant roof damage. We did have a report of a gust earlier in Virginia, or sorry, in Pennsylvania, actually, that did actually collapse a carport. And that was only like a 60 mile per hour gust. And these are 70 mile per hour gusts, potentially, that we are talking about here. So you got to look out for that. We did also just get a new severe thunderstorm warning. And all right, this is major. Uh, this is breaking news. We have a baseball-sized hail warning right now. This is a destructive storm for northern Sterling County. I was talking about how this storm was going to stay on the southern side of this warning, and now it uh, has gotten a warning for the south of the warning box there, if that makes any sense. Um, this new polygon here, this does include um, the Highway 163 area, Highway 87 out towards uh, Silver there near Highway 208. Um, luckily this is not a very populated area, it's very mountainous, but you, if you are included in this warning, you also need to be taking cover now. This is baseball sized hail falling currently here, um, that is again approaching the Silver, Texas area near the Silver Peak, so take cover now. This is destructive, oh sorry, this is a destructive storm for northern Sterling County in Texas. People and animals outdoors will be severely injured. Expect shatter windows, extensive damage to roofs, siding, and vehicles. So, this is dangerous, guys. Hello, Mr. Storm. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we do have a storm producing baseball-sized hail here close to Silver, Texas. Again, this is a destructive storm. Um, yeah, crazy outbreak possible for sure. Uh, heading for northern Sterling County, Texas. We do have a tornado watch in effect right now for portions of Texas and Oklahoma. We have a severe thunderstorm watch in portions of Nebraska, South Dakota, and Wyoming. And then we have another severe thunderstorm watch out here in the mid-Atlantic area. We've got several different storms that we are watching uh, today. Again, the most significant one right now is currently producing baseball-sized hail approaching Silver, Texas. Take cover now. In addition to that, 70-mile-per-hour wind gusts will be possible approaching Westbrook, Colorado City, and Lorraine, yes, baseball sized. Um, that's not your average everyday hailstone. That is for sure. And it looks like we may even have, uh, that's mostly contamination, I think. Let's go and check on the reflectivity. We may have some rotation uh, trying to develop here. That very well could possibly be rotation trying to spin up here, uh, just about to cross Highway 87. So we may have a tornado threat coming in soon with this storm. You may notice. Um, we have some dots here that go pretty far outside. This looks like rain, right? No, this is actually what's called a hail spike. Basically, what's happening here is the radar is sending out its signal, right? It's going now, and then the hail interferes with that signal, and it glitches out and creates what we call a hail spike whenever you get hail large enough. And that's what that is right there. That is a hail spike. 
Um, so this, again, is some very large hail. That is one of the reasons that we do have that baseball-sized uh, tag, I do believe. Um, yeah, that definitely is going to do a lot of damage. Just because even a few scans ago, it was even more impressive than this here. Um, which I believe is one of the reasons they put that baseball-sized hail tag on this. Um, look at that massive hail spike. That is crazy. Again, this is still doing a hail spike. It is a little bit smaller now. Um, but this is still a destructive storm for northern Sterling County, Texas. This is going to go off to the north of Sterling City. If you're in Sterling City, you're good, all right? You're fine. But if you're in Silver, um, or if you're in anywhere than this warning here in any of these little mountaintops, you need to be taking cover. Um, again, this is a destructive storm for Sterling County. Again, very dangerous situation. Take cover now. Um, that kind of severe thunderstorm warning is uh, destructive enough to actually to set off the wireless emergency alerts on your phone and the emergency alert system on your TV and radios. So, luckily, we are definitely slamming the message out there. Okay, uh, it's good. It looks like this hail threat is diving off, but or dying off, I should say. Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here onto my computer really quickly. Um, just a second here. Severe thunderstorm warning, including Silver, Texas, until 5.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Oh, or definitely oh, slamming the message out there. Uh, sorry. This is a life-threatening situation. Seek shelter now. This is a destructive severe thunderstorm warning. This is a PDS severe thunderstorm warning for North, uh, Northern Sterling County. Um, this does only include 78 people, which is good. But ideally, we'd like for something, that is, for something like this to not happen at all. Um, but it is good that this, this is happening in a very rural area. Again, I, I cannot stress enough, you got to be taking cover here. This is a life-threatening situation. Seek shelter now in northern Sterling County. Um, and that is a message from the National Weather Service it's, itself. It's not just like something that I'm making up there. Um, and uh, as soon as they put that tag on that warning, actually, it looks like the hail core is dying out quite a bit. We've still got damaging winds and large hail associated with this storm, though, so look out, take cover. And again, maybe even a little bit of rotation trying to materialize there over Highway 87 right now. But again, I don't, that could be somewhat contamination uh, from the radar that may not be all real. But again, if you're in northern Sterling County, you need to be taking cover. Um, and then same thing here for this storm that is currently moving through um, the. Uh, the, the storm up here, it just more moved through Forsaw, Forsaw, Forsan, oh my goodness, I cannot speak. Because uh, this is also producing hail up to Easter egg size and 70 mile per hour damage in wind gusts, which is also incredibly dangerous. This one up here heading for Hermley is not quite as intense, but you're still going to want to make sure that you are getting away from windows there. Um, again, it's, that's somewhat contamination for sure, but we may have a little bit of rotation trying to materialize here. These storms are really popping off in Texas now. Um, and unfortunately, this is only the beginning. We're going to be seeing stuff like this for the next several hours. And we do actually have a couple of storms up here in South Dakota that are developing. Nothing crazy yet, but one is near the Hot Springs area. We even have a mesoscale for St. Louis. We do have a couple of storms popping off in southeastern Missouri. And then obviously we've also got a massive severe weather outbreak occurring in the mid-Atlantic area right now. Damaging winds and large hail are the main concerns with that. The reason I'm not talking about that is because we have a much more significant event already going on. But there's definitely still some significant stuff over here that you're going to want to watch out for. This storm here um, to the west of Snowshoe, West Virginia, uh, is currently producing ping pong ball sized hail. So you got to look out for that. Make sure that you are getting away from windows. Um, and yeah, still some large to very large hail associated with this storm here. It is now crossing the Highway 821 area. Again, it looks like we do have some uh, minor rotation trying to materialize here. So the tornado possible tag might get slapped on to one of these warnings or both of them possibly. And then same thing with this storm here. I would not be surprised if the tornado possible tag was thrown onto this severe thunderstorm warning. Because again, this is a very dangerous storm. Starting off this stream with a bang. Again, people and animals outdoor will be severely injured. Expect shattered windows, extensive damage to roofs, siding, and vehicles.
And those damaging wind gusts aren't something to play around with either. 60 mile per hour winds, again, is enough to cause uh, trees to get knocked over. Power lines can even get knocked over by that. Some weaker structures can collapse, like carports, as we saw earlier there in Pennsylvania. So, you gotta be taking that very seriously as well. And, again, we do have a little bit of rotation trying to materialize here. It's nothing major, but I do think they will put the tornado possible tag on this severe thunderstorm warning for four sand pretty soon here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are about to enter an area that does not get very good radar coverage. It's what's known as a radar hole in the weather community. When do you anticipate the storms in the plains will be crossing the Mississippi River? That is going to be uh, something that does happen um, kind of in the overnight hours into tomorrow, kind of morning, afternoon. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at the NAM 3KM model here. Uh, if it'll let us, that would be nice. NAM, there we go. So we can see that the storms haven't even formed yet, right? But once they do, they are expected to be there centered around the plains in the afternoon and the evening time hours. We did just get a new severe thunderstorm warning, by the way. Uh, that is going to be out there in Virginia, 1-inch hail and 60-mile-per-hour damaging wind gusts. But anyway, the, uh, the storms crossing the Mississippi River will not be something that uh, takes place until tomorrow, most likely. We see that, you know, by 5, 6 a.m., they're kind of rolling into parts of Missouri and Iowa. And then uh, kind of around 11 a.m., they start to cross over the Mississippi River there into Illinois. Uh, it does depend on where you're talking about, uh, specifically in the, Missi uh, the Mississippi River Valley. But it it's going to be sometime tomorrow, uh, most likely kind of in the morning to afternoon time hours. Uh, we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow as well for portions of Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. Um, again, that's a three out of five risk there for Cedar Rapids, Davenport, Galesburg, Quincy, Des Moines, Ames, Waterloo. And then we also have two enhanced risks today, actually. But yeah, uh, to answer your question, uh, sometime around noon tomorrow, they will be uh, crossing the Mississippi River. Davenport, yeah. So sometime around noon to maybe 1 to 2 p.m., you will get storms before them, but it won't be that specific cluster of storms. But you could see an isolated, strong to severe storm even before then. So, yeah, it, it just depends. Thanks for the update, no problem. That is my job here. If anybody else has any questions, make sure that you are leaving those down below, because I am happy to answer them, obviously. Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning for the baseball-sized hail has already been downgraded because, again, as soon as they issued that, the hail threat went down, kind of. Uh, but it's still ping-pong ball-sized hail. You still got to well, watch out for that. Make sure that you are getting away from windows. And then, again, this storm is also producing 70-mile-per-hour winds here on the warning for the Colorado City area. Right now, these storms are to the south and the west of Colorado City, but they will ride up that area. Um, I don't think the worst of it's going to hit Colorado City, but undoubtedly, Colorado City is going to get some storms. You kind of just went through a storm in Colorado City. Maybe on the north side, you saw some lightning or something, but you do have another one incoming. So you got to look out for that, for sure. Um, we do have some more damage reports since the last uh, stream. We do have some trees down in Virginia. Nothing crazy. Kind of your uh, typical... Severe wind damage there. <laughs> um, these storms are very close to the Sweetwater area. Sweetwater, um, I think you're probably not going to be under a warning um, for any of these storms for quite a while. But I think the south side of your county might be. And maybe these storms head further north than I'm thinking. And they do hit Sweetwater. So you got to look out there still. They are very close to your area. So obviously you want to look out for that. We're also going to go ahead and bring up our Norman, Oklahoma cam here. We do have uh, German Texas in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. I forgot to mention that. Um, eventually, these storms will make it towards the German Texas area, and we'll probably have a pretty good live shot of that. And even right now, we can kind of see a little bit of a storm off in the distance there near German that is, uh, actually, it's not really a storm, but some rain out there towards Bridgeport. What way is this camera facing? Yeah, it is facing towards that storm near Bridgeport, or the rain near Bridgeport, rather. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking really fast. I'm just, you know, I, I want to make sure that we are covering this properly. 
Because, again, this is a life-threatening situation for some people here. <laughs> again, I, do wanna, I don't want to overhype these storms. The hail threat is going down. It's not nearly as bad as it was earlier, but still some 2-inch hail may fall in this warning box here. For portions of uh, northeastern Glasscock and Mitchell and southeastern Howard counties in Texas. So look out for that for sure. Uh, if you are in the severe warning for silver, it kind of looks like this storm has just curved far enough to the north where it's not actually going to hit you, which is um, funny because originally that was expected to be the big one. But you can kind of see it was heading a little bit to the north, but it was mostly heading east. But now it, it's kind of diving, like, you know, sh properly northeast there. And the warning for the Hermley area has just been condensed. Uh, now it's down to quarter size hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts, but Hermley, I mean, this is, this is coming in, so you gotta look out for this. Make sure that you are getting indoors, getting away from the windows preferably, but, uh, the hail threat should not be too bad with this one. It is about to cross Highway 84 towards Hermley once again. Um, I think, uh, like downtown Hermley hopefully misses this, but I, I don't know. Maybe not. Again, these storms are kind of curving to the north at the last second here. I mean, they were going north this whole time, but they're going even further to the north now. Heading pretty much straight northeast. So let's go back out here to the mid-Atlantic area. We haven't really covered this area very much this stream. That's because, obviously, we got our severe storms out there, but there's nothing much going on outside of damaging winds and large hail. Which, we have those, but more significant out here in Texas right now. So I'm covering Texas more. We do actually have this isolated severe thunderstorm here near Asheville, North Carolina. This storm has completely lost its steam here. But it went over the Mills River area, um, over Highway 280. It is approaching the Hendersonville area pretty soon. But it's looking like they are going to drop the severe warning. So... That storm is no longer severe, most likely. Does not meet severe limits, at least. Um, this uh, little cell here that went on the north side of Hickory, I know it's worn for 50 mile per hour winds and um, pea-sized hail, but it is dying out very rapidly, too. There's just not enough storm juice down there in North Carolina. Uh, we did also just get a new severe thunderstorm warning. That is... Uh, is that the one for Pocahontas County, West Virginia? It might be. Or it's... Uh, I, I think that's what it is. It's not down here in Texas. It is looking like they're going to drop the severe warning for this storm uh, that went through Hermley. Uh, another new severe warning. That's in North Carolina. So they actually did continue that severe warning for that storm. Um, actually, it's for a different storm. These are just little wind makers down here, aren't they? near Breverd, so look out for that, but as I was saying, the Hermley, oh my goodness, can you quit interrupting me? <laughs> uh, we do have another new severe warning, this one's all the way down in South Carolina, um, wait, no, that's not the one, we, that's the one we just talked about, uh, I think it's somewhere in Virginia, one in Chale, 60 mile per hour damaging winds, okay, hopefully I can get through my full sentence this time without getting interrupted by another severe warning, but I'm thinking the Hermley storm, they're not going to continue the severe warning for because they issued a special weather statement ahead of it. So it's kind of looking like this is going to just turn into a strong storm, still capable of producing 40 mile per hour wind gusts and nickel sized hail. So look out for that. But it is no longer quite as intense as it once was. Um, the same can be said for this storm approaching the Colorado City area. The hail threat and the damaging wind threat are not quite as materialized as they were earlier. They were definitely more noticeable earlier. The rotation's also pretty much completely gone here. But scattered gusts to isolated gusts, I would say up to 65 to 70 miles per hour, are still possible. So you still want to be taking cover because there is also potentially Easter, ice, uh, Easter egg sized hail falling with that as well. So go ahead and take cover now. This warning should really be removed. This area did not see anything. <laughs> it's kind of funny. The wireless emergency alert would have went off for this area on the phones and the EAS alert as well, but nothing even happened. They didn't even get, like, a single raindrop in some of those spots. A little bit of the north uh, western portion of the warning got clipped, but 
Okay, now they did actually remove that warning, which is good. <laughs> Again, we still have this 2 inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour wind warning here. Flying debris and wind driven hail are going to be dangerous with this storm. People and animals outdoors will be injured. Expect hail damage to roofs, sidings, windows, and vehicles. Expect considerable tree damage. Wind damage is also likely to mobile homes, roofs, and outbuildings. If you're in a mobile home, I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you're in a mobile home, you're going to need to get out of there and find a more substantial structure. We talked about earlier how those wind gusts can collapse, like completely collapse some weaker structures. Mobile homes are one of those. Uh, mobile homes are not a safe place to be in during winds uh, this intense or even hail this big. That thing is going to get dented to no end. But yeah, uh, again, uh, when I say flying debris, I mean, um, you know, like pieces of roofs, all right, sidings, windows, or sorry, that's actually hail damage. But still, the winds can pick that up and throw it around. Uh, if somebody has lawn chairs out, those are going to get picked up by those winds. Um, back in the famous Eastern Iowa, or I should say infamous, Eastern Iowa derecho, one of the most famous photos was a lawn chair that was thrown into a home, and like half of it was sticking into the home, half of it was sticking out, because the damaging winds completely threw it into there. So you're going to want to make sure that you're in the middle of your house. Um, so that something like that doesn't randomly just poke through your wall and boom, you get hit by that. Because that would not be good. Um, again, pieces of roofs as well could be uh, dangerous. Maybe some shingles or something. Some sheet metal might go flying around here. Which, obviously, you don't want to get hit by that whenever it's moving fast. That is um, something that it causes serious injuries and sometimes even deaths in situations like this. Also, if you're traveling along Interstate 20 here between uh, Brownlee and the Colorado City area, you're going to want to get off because wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour are definitely enough to flip over semis. And maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not in a semi. I'm fine. I'm just in a car. No, cars can still occasionally get tipped over by those kinds of winds, especially if it's a bigger car. And then also... What if a, a semi is traveling on there, and right in front of you, that gets flipped, you, you don't have enough time to slow down, you ram into it, that's bad. Uh, we did just get a downgrade to that severe thunderstorm warning, by the way. Like I said, it is kind of weakening out. Uh, it's now down to half dollar size tail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Make sure that you are still getting away from windows, um, preferably in the middle of, a, uh, of your house as well, but... It's not required, really, in a situation like that. These storms here in South Dakota near the Buffalo Gap area are trying to get their act together, but right now they're not doing much other than some small hail and maybe a little bit of gusty wind activity. <laughs> Nothing severe yet, for sure, there in South Dakota. We have a new wind damage report. Trees, uh, wait, yeah, trees on power lines. Oh, uh, that's another thing. This is going to cause a lot, and I mean a lot, of power outages in this event. Um, especially because of how widespread it is. We already, uh, even 17 minutes ago, had about 2,500 customers in Texas without power. That number is definitely going to go up at the next update because of those 70 mile per hour wind, uh, damage and wind gusts that we just had. Um... Virginia right now, you got about 2,000 customers without power. West Virginia, about 2,000 customers without power. Um, even Maryland, you got about 200 customers without power, which doesn't sound as impressive, but you got to remember Maryland is a much smaller state. Pennsylvania still has about 2,000 customers without power. Um, even New Jersey's got about 450 customers without power. Delaware, you got about 150 customers without power, which again doesn't sound like a lot, but Delaware's a much, much, much smaller state. We do have a couple of stronger storms up here in Wyoming right now, but they're not going to be much other than some wind and hail makers. No real uh, tornado threat with those in central Wyoming, but again, Southeastern Wyoming, like far southeastern Wyoming, uh, I guess really just eastern Wyoming in general, could have a small tornado threat for tonight, but still not going to be anything crazy. And let's actually bring it back down to our storms here in Texas. Um, 
Again, this storm is currently moving through Westbrook, approaching the Colorado City area. It is not as intense as it was before, as you may have heard me been, uh, be saying. It has weakened a significant amount, but that's still a strong to severe storm. Still has a severe thunderstorm warning with it, so you got to look out for that. Um, we do have a new severe thunderstorm watch. Uh, this here in central and northern Nebraska is actually new. Um, that does include Valentine and North Platte. This was issued about seven minutes ago. Um, the main threat with that is going to be damaging winds and large to very large hail, potentially uh, an isolated hailstone up to tennis ball sized. With an isolated tornado not being able to be ruled out per se, but it's not a high threat by any means. And don't forget, we've also got our storms out here near Missouri that we're watching. I guess they have kind of fizzled out. But we were watching to see if an isolated one of those does go severe or anything like that. Um, but it is more important definitely to focus on our ongoing severe weather events, obviously. Uh, this storm to the south of Salisbury um, in... This is Virginia. Uh, I never, I'm never able to tell with the Delmarva which state we're in. Uh, that's going to be heading there for the... Uh, or sorry, that's actually in Maryland. Well, there's proof that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Delmarva. Um, that is actually going to move through the Pocomoke City area pretty soon here with some large hail and damaging wind gusts, so look out for that. The hail's the main threat, though, for sure, I'd say. <laughs> we have a lot of severe warnings that do expire in one minute here at the 5.15 uh, hour there, central time. You know, we're still watching our storms out here in Texas, but they are much less intense now, so we can kind of start to focus on the mid-Atlantic area just a little bit more. And let's see here. Wow, okay, so this storm here near Ashland is doing some large to very large hail off to the north of Montpelier right now, and also some damaging wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So look out for that. Um, all right, sorry. I've been silent here for the past couple of minutes. I was looking at something. I was getting a text. We are down to seven severe thunderstorm warnings now, most of which are in Virginia, but we've got some in Maryland, some in South Carolina even, North Carolina, Texas, all over the place right now. And again, anywhere in between this line of storms too, or these two clusters of storms, I should say, we are watching for potential storm development here. That is why we have a marginal and even a slight risk in some spots there, even in between our threats. <laughs> That's kind of around the Midwest Ohio Valley area, but I think the main threat for the Midwest Ohio Valley will come tomorrow and Wednesday. Did I really almost just say Wednesday? <laughs> I was, I, I was going to say Wednesday, and then in my head, after I say Wednesday, I have a really weird thing where I go Wednesday, just in my head, and it just came out as Wednesday. I am so sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday is when that's going to be occurring, most likely. All right. I still can't believe I almost said Wednesday out loud. We may have a little bit of rotation trying to materialize here to the southwest of Westbrook uh, in Texas, but it's not much. And if it is anything, there's some uh, contamination in there as well. So 
not super reliable there. We actually have some flash flood warnings out here in Wyoming from these storms that moved through. Heavy rain apparently occurred with those. So gotta look out for that for sure. Hot Springs and Park Counties in Wyoming. You are under a flash flood warning for a certain part of your county at least. Hot Springs County, there's a warning for the southern side and the northern side. So, But if you're off like towards Thermopolis, you're not seeing any flooding at all. It is a really big county. Wyoming is chock full of big counties. Really, the entirety of the western United States has just like much bigger counties than the eastern United States. Probably because a lot of it is just, you know, there's more empty fields and stuff like that. <laughs> but, I mean, look at the difference. Like, you look at Kansas... You got very, very tiny counties all over the place. Missouri's doing the same thing. Even all the way out to Illinois, it's doing the same thing. But uh, you take it out to Arizona. Like, look at that county there. That is a huge county. It, it may not seem that impressive, but, like, that's the entire size of, like, some of the smaller states in the U.S. And it's one county. It's, like... Uh, it includes Flagstaff, Mesquite. There's so many major cities in there, even. Like, from point to point, it is about uh, almost 200 miles in its uh, length. Oh, my goodness. Its width, it's, it, it's about 150 miles. It is huge. You could take a vacation to the other side of your county. <laughs> Alright, we did let, or they did drop one of the severe thunderstorm warnings here for the one I was talking about. I did say it would probably get dropped. It did. That is still a strong storm that you gotta watch out for, but it is no longer severe warned, so that's good. Storm near Westbrook in Colorado City is no longer impressing me by any means. We have some storms here in central Nebraska that are starting to materialize, actually, into something, potentially. And then also, like, southwest South Dakota, we have, again, those storms near Buffalo Gap. They're really trying to get going there. They just need to take that final step to get, like, recognition from the National Weather Service in the form of a special weather statement. But there is maybe some small hail and gusty winds associated with those right now, so look out for that. Again, we're not even at, like, the peak of our event. The most intense stuff is expected to be this evening in portions of Kansas and Nebraska. These storms are kind of the start of that. You're Thedford. What's up? Uh, but, yeah, these near Thedford, they don't look... When do you have a uh, when you have a minute, do you mind checking southern Ohio and northern West Virginia? Yeah, we'll do that uh, right after this. Um, these little storms, they don't look that impressive, but look at how quickly they materialized. Just 30 minutes ago, they were nothing, and now we, they're lightning producers there. So, it, I mean, it, within the next 20 to 30 minutes, even one of those could get a special weather statement or something. Okay, so northwest Virginia and southern Ohio. Um, let's take a look at your threats. Um, so right now... There's not too much going on, just a few stronger storms potentially out there in closer to central West Virginia, really. Um, you uh, are at a marginal threat today if you are in, like, southeast Ohio, western Virginia, or western West Virginia, rather. Um, that's most likely the threat you're under. It's a one out of five. Um, and then we got tomorrow you're under another 1 out of 5 risk. That's another marginal risk of severe weather. Uh, we get into Wednesday, that's another marginal risk of severe weather. You're going to have three days in a row where you're under a marginal risk. And then after that, actually, on Thursday, 
Um, oh, I guess that's nothing. I forgot that was the Southern Plains Day. But yeah, you're going to have three days in a row where you're under a marginal risk of severe weather. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the models are predicting for your area. So right now, there's not too much going on over there. Obviously, this is kind of this afternoon, actually, earlier. Um, but let's play this out, right? So this is uh, later this evening, kind of around 9 p.m., kind of the bedtime hour for a lot of people. Maybe just a couple of showers in your area, nothing crazy. We do get a few storms that could be strong to severe here tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Um, kind of 3 to 6 or 7 p.m. would be the timing for your area though. there for those storms. Maybe some hail and some wind. And then after that, it's going to be mostly just showery and some isolated storms. So, again, I'm thinking the biggest severe threat for your area over the next few days will be tomorrow afternoon into kind of tomorrow evening, depending on where you're at. Uh, we definitely do have a little bit con of convection there that could produce an isolated, strong to severe storm. Um, kind of in southeastern Ohio and western West Virginia. Um, I, I'm loving going through all these specific locations, though, so please keep putting them down below if anybody has any questions. Um, by the way, this warning did, uh, did get downgraded again, now down to quarter-sized hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts over Colorado City. Still probably a pretty strong and even severe storm, actually, for you guys, but... Not as intense as it, it was just a few minutes ago, for sure. Traveling, and it is gorgeous here right now. Perfect weather tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Again, we got a, a few strong to severe storms all the way down into South Carolina. Now, that's like South Carolina, North Carolina border. It's not like far down in South Carolina, but. All right. So Colorado City, Texas, again, you're in a severe storm. You're pretty much getting the worst of it right now. We do have a few other storms out here in Virginia that we could start to look at now that things are calming down over there. This one is capable of producing some large to very large hail. It's worn for ping pong ball sized hail here as it approaches Ashland, Virginia. Make sure that you are getting away from windows there. <laughs> Preferably in the middle of your home. And uh, let's see here. That is the most intense severe thunderstorm warning we have right now. We've got two in Virginia, one in West Virginia, one in Texas, and then one in South Carolina and one in North Carolina on the South Carolina and North Carolina border there. Did just get a new special weather statement in West Virginia. I saw that pop up there. That is for a storm capable of producing 40 mile per hour wind gusts. It does have the intensification possible tag on it, so you got to look out for that. Um, we may see a severe thunderstorm when get issued with that down the line right now. I'm not thinking so, but... Large hail is definitely a threat with that, I would say, as well. I'm kind of surprised there's not even any sort of hail warning on there. But to the north of Richardson, maybe you're getting some large hail there in West Virginia. <laughs> Again, Colorado City, you're kind of getting the worst of the storm right now here in Texas. If you're on the north side, you're definitely getting some large hail, at least. So make sure that you are reporting large hail into your local National Weather Service. Do you want Arby's French curly fries, or do you want to hear uh, tater tots, please. Anyway, <laughs> what would you guys have picked? Arby's curly fries or tater tots? I mean, Arby's curly fries are good, but I like me some tater tots personally. We have a potential water spout here. Um, off the coast of southeastern New Jersey. The rotation really started to ramp up once it got off of land there. And water spouts do actually drop easier than tornadoes. So <laughs> we may have a water spout on the ground there. Actually, that could be contamination. Or no, the velocities just haven't updated yet. That's not contamination. That is real. Uh, I do want to see this really quickly. It doesn't really matter since nobody's going to get impacted by this except for the fish. Make sure to avoid boat travel here in this area for sure. Yeah. Weak rotation again, but we may have had a brief water spout there for a second. There was a, a short period of time where the rotation kind of intensified there. 
Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning is likely going to get dropped. The reason I'm thinking that is because they did issue, or is this not a new special weather statement? Um, yeah, they, they issued a special weather statement for this storm here, so it's no longer severe, most likely. But as it approaches Cleveland, South Carolina, it could be producing 50 mile per hour wind gusts and pea sized hail still, so look out for that. And yeah, our storm over Colorado City, you guys have kind of gotten the worst fit. You're kind of just left with some moderate rain and a little bit of lightning now. <laughs> I don't know what that noise I just made with my nose was. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, and if you have any questions about your location, make sure that you are leaving those down below, please, because really, pretty much anywhere in the central or eastern United States between now and the end of this week is going to have some chance for severe weather, because even if it's not with this system, once again, we've got another system coming in after this. We already have a day four slight risk for this little area here. And that's going to be a little Dixie Alley destroyer. One of those classic Dixie Alley uh, severe weather outbreaks, most likely. Got a new severe thunderstorm warning in Virginia. The, I guess I shouldn't say severe weather outbreak because we don't know that yet. But it's likely going to uh, be capable of producing some severe storms. Maybe an isolated tornado on one of the days late this week. I do think we will likely see at least, uh, probably, I think I'm going to guess one tornado today. I would put my guess a little bit higher considering we do have a 10% hatched risk, but um, the fact that yesterday's event was a total bust has kind of lowered my expectations for this event, even though they have no correlation at all. I don't know. And we'll probably start to see some minor damage reports out of the Colorado City area soon. Maybe some trees downed. Maybe an isolated power outage uh, burst there. Let's go and check the power outage map, actually. Because Texas, eh, if it's updated now, which it likely has, probably has quite a few more. And yeah, it is up to 2,200 power outages. That's about 200 more than when we last checked. Some of the customers may have already gotten restored their power in this area. Because the storm's over there, so... So we we at least got 200 to 300 more outages there just from that tiny little cell, which is really impressive. So there's your uh, proof, your documentation. If you didn't believe me that those storms are going to cause some power outages, there you go. Again, our storms in South Dakota and Nebraska, they're really trying to get going now. Nothing strong to severe yet, but a couple storms may produce some small hail and maybe even some gusty winds in, if you're in South Dakota. The Nebraska ones are maybe just some small hail, I'd say. Again, this hail core moving uh, over Highway 33 right now, heading for Ashland, is pretty concerning, actually. This warning, it's only for one inch hail, which is kind of surprising. There's definitely some large hail there, potentially up to ping pong ball size. I'm pretty sure it was worn for half dollar size hail earlier, so that actually means they downgraded it, which is surprising. Oh, well, I guess it was actually more intense earlier. I forgot about that, but still some large hail definitely possible there. And let's see. Yeah, we only have four severe thunderstorm warnings now. Uh, we're about to go down to three. This one will get removed any minute. Never mind. We got a new one. So we... What? It still says only four. Oh, it's doing the thing where it disappears and reappears. Huh. Okay. Well, we're going to have to wait for that to pop up again. But you heard the sound. You heard the little... Dun, dun, dun. That's a new severe thunderstorm warning not popped up yet still for some reason uh we do have a ping pong ball sized hail report from the north of garden city area that's where the really intense hail was uh let's actually go ahead and look at the little uh radar history load historical radar data um no i don't i i wanted to go where it actually hit Well, I guess we're not going to do that. <laughs> there was some very large hail there. I guess I could just actually 
not be lazy and turn on this. Yeah, that area definitely got smacked by some large hail, so... So far, the highest we've gotten is ping pong ball sized hail from that storm. It would not surprise me if that did go a little bit higher. Maybe the Easter egg sized hail. Again, it was worn for baseball sized hail at one point, one point in time, but that was in a very rural area and it didn't end up doing that anyway. So, or at least I don't believe it did. It could have, but I don't think it did. I don't think there's any way that was baseball sized hail. I think it actually could have been for a little bit, but that would have been before the warning got issued. It would have been down there towards Garden City, and we're only getting reports of ping pong ball sized hail. So I'm now thinking, you know, the baseball sized hail is not in the question anymore. It's more maybe ping pong ball sized to Easter egg size that actually fell. Still bad though, for sure. Definitely caused some damage to some vehicles, some windows, most likely in some spots. Or possibly, I guess I should say. Not really most likely, but... <sighs> okay. And uh, I forgot about the new warning because it took so long to pop up, but that is up now. Um, that is out there in West Virginia. That is for the Richardson area. That storm already passed through Richardson, though. So if you're in Richardson, you're good. It's over, pretty much. Just some light rain left with you. If you're on the north side, maybe some heavy rain left. So look out there. But for the most part, Richardson is done. You're probably done for a while, actually. There are no other storms in that area right now, for the most part. <laughs> And again, we are expecting some more convection to pop up very soon here for parts of Nebraska and South Dakota. We're definitely getting some small hail, lightning, and gusty winds already up there, though. So, Look at that. That is just beautiful. That is amazing. Usually whenever we look at this cam, it's like all snowy and terrible, but... I never actually realized how beautiful of a spot that was in. That's like a screensaver right there. This is Mount Shasta, California. It's 60 degrees, and you can see how much snow has fallen recently still. California weather. It's one of those states where it goes from 0 to 100 in any weather statistic. Temperature, uh, precipitation type. Alright, yeah, I'm having serious doubts that this storm near Colorado City, Texas is still severe. Um, somehow this warning has not been dropped yet on the North Carolina-South Carolina border. That storm is definitely no longer severe, and even if it is, it's pretty much left the warning box already. We may still see some downburst wind pockets with this storm, but it's not really doing much of a hail threat anymore. Maybe some isolated pea-sized hail left with that one. We do actually have a new severe thunderstorm warning. That is going to be in Virginia. Oh, that's an extension. Uh, this warning does include downtown Richmond, Virginia. One inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds are incoming. I think for the most part, that's going to stay to the north of you. Like the Mechanicsville area, I'd be worried about. Like, especially the north side of the city. Um, but Richmond, Virginia, if you do have like a NOAA weather radio or something, yes, that is going off. You are under a severe thunderstorm warning now. You're pretty much right in the middle of it. So look out there. Again, it's not like a crazy big storm, but it is uh, capable of producing severe limit hail and wind. So look out for that.
We do have four different watches in effect right now. Two of them are in the northern plains here. One of them is the tornado watch down in the south, and then the other is the huge severe thunderstorm watch out here in the mid-Atlantic area. I'm new. Do you want to be a meteorologist in the future? I do. Somebody asked me that last stream, too. Yeah, I do. All right. So, again, our storm here to the north of Lorraine, I doubt, is severe anymore. It still has a warning attached to it, a severe thunderstorm warning, but I doubt it's severe still at this point. At this point, the most concerning storms would be the hailstorms in Virginia. Parts of Richmond are so beautiful. Restored architecture, Lombardy Street area in particular. I have never been to Virginia, I don't think, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever been to Virginia. But yeah, I've been told it's one of the most beautiful states. Yes, you should become a professional meteorologist. Always a need, especially as weather gets worse. Yeah. All right. Again, maybe some gusty to damaging winds still possible with that storm, but I doubt they're severe anymore at this point. Again, some small hail may be associated with these storms here in portions of Nebraska and South Dakota, but nothing strong to severe yet, really. All right, yeah, this storm has completely left the warning box now, pretty much, so this should get removed any minute, or they may just let it expire, because it expires in five minutes anyway. The one on the North Carolina-South Carolina border was removed, and um, we still have three in Virginia and one in West Virginia. This one, though, will get uh, expire. It will expire in five minutes. This one expires in 35 And then, yeah, so uh, between now and 5, well, at 5.45, we will be down to three severe thunderstorm warnings as long as no new ones get issued. Again, guys, we're, we're nowhere near done. Um, this is the main event up here. And nothing has happened yet, but that's okay, because nothing was expected to happen. These storms are still likely going to fire off. They're still going to be damaging. We still do have a isolated, strong tornado threat. I think for the most part, tornadoes are going to be on the weaker side, though, in this kind of event. But we do have that 10% hatch risk, so an isolated, strong tornado cannot be ruled out. All right. Again, Colorado City, Texas, you're completely good now. You're out of the storm. It's probably pretty intense there for a couple of minutes, though. Probably got quite dicey. Maybe a little bit of a power flicker in a couple of spots. Oh, man, did I see Kentucky in the yellow? Yeah, Kentucky is in the yellow. That's the slight risk of severe weather. Um, portions of uh, eastern and northern Kentucky are in that slight risk of severe weather today. Um... Louisville, Kentucky is included in that. Richmond, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, um, all the way out towards uh, 
Pikeville, Danville, Campbellsville, Elizabethtown, Owensboro, Henderson. We are expecting some large hail to be possible there. I think that's going to be the main threat for you. On isolated damage and one gust or two, those still may occur. So don't be scared. Be prepared to have multiple ways to receive alerts. Some of these storms down in southeastern Illinois are actually becoming a little bit stronger than expected. <laughs> They've not warranted any warnings yet, and I don't expect them to, but those are some storms that are on the stronger side. They have kind of materialized over the last several minutes now. And again, we are watching for another band of storms to potentially pop up along the warm front here near St. Louis. Nothing much yet, though. And uh, we're kind of waiting to see if they do. It's not we're waiting for it. It's it's not a when it will happen. It's a if it'll happen situation. The mesoscale for that area has expired, so watch will likely not be issued. But still some... Uh, isolated strong to severe storms may occur there in southeastern Missouri and southwestern Illinois. <clears throat> All right, so again, uh, Richmond, Virginia, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning right now. Goochland, Virginia, you're also getting hit by a pretty big one. You're under a severe thunderstorm warning, but don't be scared, be prepared. Get away from windows and you'll be fine. I promise. Hi, nice to meet you. I am new to your channel. I appreciate what you do for us. Keep up the hard work. You are amazing and smart and intelligent. Young man, keep it up. God bless you. Thank you very much. That is uh, one of the nicest compliments I've ever received. I seriously do appreciate that. Um, so again, this severe thunderstorm morning for Colorado City, Texas will expire in one minute. The one um, out in central Virginia will expire in one minute as well for the Ashland area. So after that, we will be left with only three severe thunderstorm warnings, and there we go. They have now expired. So I think what I'm actually going to do here, because now we're all the way down to three warnings, and all of them are relatively low-end severe thunderstorm warnings, I think I'm going to end off the live stream here. We've been live for about an hour. Uh, we will be live again later for the big event. All right, I, I will 100% at least, um, specifying at least, be doing one more stream. We did just get our first severe warning in Nebraska. This is for um, Mullen. Um, actually, Mullen is not included in that. The far western side of town is. But that is just now crossing Highway 2. This storm is capable of producing half-dollar-sized hail and 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. That's the first of many, you guys. That is the event I will be covering later live. So come back, especially if you are in that area, please. I really do appreciate all the support this stream. It's been awesome. We've had a ton of interaction in the chat. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, guys. And I will see you all later.